and we're back sorry folks you get to come back to the spring of 2020 and have a video lesson if you've never done a video lesson with me then rules are simple a every time I say pause you're gonna pause and do the thing as if you were in class and then when you're done with the thing you unpause I'm here with the answers walking through the problem other than that, it should be that same catch and release pattern that you would see in class. It's just on you to actually pause and do stuff on your own so that you're, well, doing it instead of just copying it down. With that said, here we go. Last we did was 5-2. Uh, we just finished. Yep, 5-2. So we'll start with daily quiz. There it is. Pause, get it. And hopefully you actually did that. So, we last did direct variation where we were talking about um, proportions, basically. If y varies directly with x, then I can say, oh, I'm kind of off to the side here. Oh, that's okay. If y varies directly with x, then I can have y over x. And if y is over x, then 18 is over negative 54, and negative 17 is over x. So I cross multiply and solve that way. I can either Jesus fish, we call it alpha, multiply the two that line up, divide by the one that doesn't, and get a 54, or sorry, 51. Ooh, my markers suck. All right, let's try a big pen. Getting 51 that way. Option two is that I'm going to have y equals k times x. So I would plug in. I know 18 is a y. I know k times a negative 54. So I would divide by that 54 and get k is a negative 1 third. So I would then plug in negative 17 as my y, negative one third times x, divide by negative one third, same thing as multiplying by negative three, and get 51. Okay, so either way you're going to get 51. The table showing direct variation, the idea was if y over x equals k, then every one of these I should be able to take y divided by x, y divided by x, y divided by x, and they're all going to come out the same. In this case, I get a positive 5 thirds. In this case, I get a positive 5 thirds. But if you were slowing down and paying attention instead of just being lazy about it, you would catch that this one was a negative 5 thirds. So if that is direct variation, this should have been positive. So I would just say no, and that's it. So, daily quiz, just like always, you're going to score it up out of five. We're going to have, did you actually divide? And then say no. Not just no. You have something to back it up. Second part, you have work to back up, whether you did the proportion, whether you cross-multiplied, maybe, uh, what was that? Um, be a negative 918 divided by 18 or you had find k and then plug yourself in but either way you got the work to back it up then got to the answer and as always we'll leave one floating for I did something really dumb I, I goofed I missed a negative I um, accidentally put 18 here and negative 17 there and I just mess the whole thing up. So whatever it is, you're still going to say x out of 5 and move on. Okay. Um, so just so you know, uh, I'm sitting at my desk. Uh, where is thing? Right? Okay. Right there. In the corner of my bedroom doing um, just old school video lesson. We just put baby bear down, 
for a nap, and we're hoping to knock out this whole video in a short amount of time before he starts squawking. Now, because of that, again, you need to be on the ball about, when I say pause, you pause, do the thing, hit play, and we're good to go. I'm only going to have a couple seconds pause in between there. So, we will move on to 5-3. Slope intercept form is kind of the holy grail, uh, the, the bare bones, everyone should know this, of all of high school math. Okay, so start by pausing and seeing if you can answer the question on this guy right here. Okay, hopefully you actually did that. It asks us for this prediction, and that's what a slope or a rate of change allows us to do, is if I know a rate that it's going to go up so much for how much of this goes up, x increases, y increases, x increases, y decreases. If I know that rate, that ratio between them, then I'm able to extrapolate, I'm able to predict. And in this particular case, find the point where the line crosses the vertical axis. Well, it's just 20, right? You just look at it. What does the point tell you about the bamboo plant? Well, if you're looking at time and height, okay, the time is zero, the height is 20 feet. Really? Feet? That's a big honking. Okay. That's really big. That means it starts at 20 feet. I really think they meant inches, but yeah. I mean, the trees get big, but yeah, but neither here nor there. Find the slope of the line. We already did this with just counting boxes. You count your rise and your run but you gotta be careful about your scale. In this case, every one of my vertical boxes is worth 10, but every one of my horizontal boxes is worth five. So it didn't really move over five, it moved over 10. My slope is 10 up, 10 right, so it's just a slope of one. What does it tell you? Okay, if the time is zero and the height is 20, it starts at 20 feet or inches if it was a typo. This tells me that for every one time it's going to go up one foot or one height. So I use my labels here since my slope is change in y's over change in x's I actually apply those labels. It's one foot per day. Okay, so y's over x's is a slope, it's a rate of change, so it also tells me my labels y's over x's. And that is where now we get into the mechanics of it. If I can apply that to the core mechanics that we're going to talk about, then that means I can now do the whole world of linear functions and their context in the real world. So, next up, we have, yeah, let's make that bigger. Okay, so everything up here. We've talked a little bit about parent functions before. Parent function is the simplest the things can get. And the simplest that a line can get is y equals x, okay? The function version of it is the function of x is to give me x. So think about that in terms of plugging in x's and y's. The function of 1 is to give me 1. I'll put in a 1, I'll get out a 1. The function of 2 is to give me a 2. Function of 2 is 2. Function of 3 is 3. Function of negative 2 is negative 2. And that's where we get this line. Use a straight edge. And that's the parent function of all linear equations. 
every other line that we're ever going to deal with is called a transformation of that. It's going to be moved up or down. It's going to be stretched or compressed. But, just like you are an iteration of your parents, every one of the lines we deal with will be an iteration of this. It's just going to get squished, or it's going to get taller, or it's going to move up or down. And that's what all of this stuff is about. The two primary things about it, the things that matter more than anything else, are the slope. They use M to represent slope, probably because S's look like fives. Or it's used elsewhere in math. B is a y-intercept. So I want you to write this mx plus b business here. I would also like you to write that down as y is rise over run. Just like when we first learned our slope stuff, I'd said to put your little arrows there. If I run left to right, then the up or down of it I don't have to worry about signs. The up or down of it is the sign. If it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down. But I'm always headed to the right. So something rise over on x. And a y-intercept. Think about the wording on that. It says it up here, too. An intercept is where you cross something. So when I say plus b, and b is a y-intercept, I'm telling you start at 0 comma b. It's the point you're going to start at. So like this one, because it hit the y-axis at 0, its y-intercept was 0. Because the slope was up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, its slope is 1. That's the parent function. These are going to be a little bit different. Okay, But this, y'all, big deal. In fact, if you go and ask your parents what they remember about algebra, even if they haven't touched anything mathematical beyond um, basic numeracy and accounting in their jobs for years, decades, I bet you they'll remember y equals mx plus b, because it is burned into your retinas for the next three and a half years. Please write this down and that's what today is all about. So we'll shove this back up into the corner here and you should have your notes right in front of you. I have to do it over here because I didn't have my notes printed out. So we go with problem one. Identifying slope and y-intercept should be fairly easy. It's just what's in the M spot, what's in the B spot. That's it. So if I have 5x minus 2, there's my slope. Mm, maybe it wasn't so easy. It says y equals mx plus b. This doesn't say plus 2, it says minus 2. So I have to understand that this is really y equals 5x plus a negative 2. Okay? So because it didn't say plus 2, it said minus 2, I have to understand that negative 2 is my y-intercept. Okay? So just be careful with your signs. It's just tell me what are in those two spots. So pause it and answer the questions there for 1a and 1b. And hopefully you did that. My slope, nice and simple, negative one half. Means I'll go down one, right two. My y-intercept, because it does say plus, is two thirds. They ask how the graph of this line and the equation in part A change if the y-intercept is moved down three units. 
So the uh, 5x minus two, okay. This guy over here, I would start at negative two and have a slope of up five over one. Okay. That's what this line looks like. If I were to move the y-intercept down three, you take every point on it and move them all down one, two, three. So this point moves down three, this point moves down three, and I kind of got to go a little bit off-road there. I didn't leave enough room. And it'll look the same, just literally move down three. No, McAfee, I don't need to scan my computer now. Um, same thing for this guy. It's going to start as, if green will work this time, a y-intercept of two-thirds, and then down one over two, down one over two, up one, back two, up one, left two. So if this is the initial line, then its counterpart, hold on, let me get, uh, we need some different, we got orange, we got orange, we got blue, we yeah, got orange, there we go. Right, can you all see that? That's good enough. If I move that down three, one, two, three. I really dislike hearing you baby bear in there squawking. I've got really thin walls in my house, and any time I even talk, it gets restless in bed. So I take this line, move it down three, and you get this idea again of translations. Everything is just a modification of a previous line. Okay. Problem two. They tell you the slope in the y-intercept. Now you write the equation. So now it's kind of the swap of what we were just doing. They gave us the equation. Tell me what the slope and y-intercept are now. Here's the slope and y-intercept. Tell me the equation. And it's really just plug and chug. If that's the form of it, then I put the slope in there. I put the y-intercept right there. Negative four-fifths, x plus seven. That's it. So, pause and get it. And hopefully you did. Same thing, my slope is three halves, my y-intercept is negative one, and if you just left it like that, well, you're missing something. Remember, it's mx plus b. This is just the number in front of x. Okay, problem three. Now they're gonna give us the graph. I copied the graphs down. Um, if they ask us to write the equation from this, it's still the same idea. I want to know what the slope is. I want to know what the y-intercept is. But I have to find them from the graph, from the picture. So we'll identify that the y-intercept is at 0, negative 2. So negative 2 will go in the B spot. And I'll count between any two points. Okay, They can be here to here, up to right 1. Or I could even go from here to here, go up 8, write 4. Well, 8 over 4 still reduces to 2. So in either case, I counted boxes and I got my slope of 2. I identified my y-intercept as negative 2. And y equals mx plus b. I'm going to put 2 and then a negative two. Ta-da! That's all it is. So, um, again, I'm also trying to talk a little quieter here because thin walls spawn. Um, if you would, pause and answer all three questions for 3ABC.
And hopefully you actually did that. Here's a purple. I have a purple pen that works. Purple pens are good. Purple, blue, five, 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 five. Yeah, there we go. So you should have a y-intercept at zero positive two. And between any of the points, either big points like this, you want to find that nice integer intersection that it goes through, or between any two consecutive points. It was either down one, right one, or down two, right two, down three, right three. It's always going to reduce to down one. So my slope is negative one. My y-intercept is two. Write your equation, negative one x plus two. Now, every year we get kids who say, can I put the negative one there if it helps me? It's not simplified if you do. Now, that isn't wrong. It's just not simplified, right? Technically, yes, it's the same line, but this is its simplified, correct answer, okay? So just always make sure that you're simplifying things whenever you can. Now, on this, you've got a bunch of problems that you can posit and practice if you need to practice. If it seems relatively simple by now, which I hope it does, because so far we're just monkey see, monkey do, then don't do them. But if you need to practice, pause it right now, and then I'll turbo through them. And maybe you did that. We should have y is 8x minus 3, y is negative 2x minus 1, y is negative x minus 7, y is 2x minus 2, it's the exact same graph that we had above, y is negative x plus 3, and this one, I had to change my scale a little bit, sometimes it's a little harder to count in between them, I see a negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and my slope comes up here at up 1, 2, 3 over 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have a 3 fourths slope, I think, because I had to make my own graph. So, moving on. Problem 4. Okay. All of that was, again, monkey see, monkey do. Here's an M, here's a B, put them in. Or, here's my graph. What is the M? What is the B? Pretty straightforward. But now we get into how do I actually make the equation if they are just telling me stuff? And it's a couple steps process. Part, part one. If I have two points, I wasn't given the slope and I wasn't given the y-intercept. So my first mission should be to find my slope, like we did two weeks ago. Remember, it's y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So we're going to say m is parenthesis minus parenthesis, parenthesis minus parenthesis. We said it was a really good idea to label x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2, and plug those in. I'm going to say negative 8 minus 1, 5 minus 2, getting a negative 9 over 3, and I'll reduce it down to negative 3. Right, okay, so. I've got my slope, I still don't have a y-intercept. 
but I do have the equation. Remember that my equation was y equals mx plus b. So I know what m is. I don't know what b is. I don't know my y-intercept. But I can find it because I could temporarily replace my x and y with x and y or x and y. They gave me a pair of coordinates and both of them are an x and a y. So pick one of them. I'd recommend this one just because it's smaller numbers. And I'll plug those in for x and y instead. I know that one of my y's is 1. I know the x that goes with it is 2. I just found out my y-intercept, or my slope, was negative 3. We can solve that. That's pretty simple. 1 is negative 6 plus b. Add 6 to the other side. b is 7. So now, if this is what the equation is supposed to look like, I'm going to combine everything. Say I know my slope. I know my y-intercept. So now it's just like the last example. y is negative 3x plus 7. Now I can just dump stuff in. I should stop using that orange pen. I can hardly see it. There. I might have to break out the black one. Do it on your own. Or I'm going to have more practice down here. Either try it on your own or just I'll go through it here and then you try the other ones. Okay. I kind of didn't write my steps up here, so let's let's go through those again. Um, step one, find your slope. Step two, we're gonna plug in y m and x. What you got to be careful about is I can't choose this y and that x because they don't go together. So they won't be a solution. They won't be an answer. They won't be actually on this line. When I plug those in, I'll solve for b. And then finally, I'm going to write y equals m x plus b. I do not want to put this x and y back in here. Remember, the point of it is to write this equation. Let's make that a little bit smaller. There we go. So, over here, I start with find my slope. I plug in there, x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2, I'll plug in a negative 3, negative 2, I'll plug in a 1 and a 3. Remember that I will add the opposite when I subtract a negative, getting a negative 1, 1 minus 3 is a negative 2, cross out your signs because they're both negative, positive 1 half. Cool, I got a slope. Part one. Part two. I'm now going to go to y equals mx plus b, that form. Get used to it. And I'm going to plug in a y, an m, an x. I'm going to go solve for my missing b. I'll choose negative two as my y. The x that goes with it is 3, and I just found that my slope was 1 half. Half of 3 is 3 halves. Don't you dare go to decimal land. And then I'll subtract 3 halves. Now, you can get common denominators, old school. You can grab a calculator. I don't really care, but you need to be able to get to this is negative 4 halves minus 3 halves is a negative 7 halves for b. 
So again, I've got my y-intercept. Now, or my slope. Now I have my y-intercept. Put them together. 1 half x minus 7 halves. So, sometimes they will also, like on our thumbs page here, on our do I get it page, sometimes they'll also just give me one point, but then they'll give me the slope. So in that case, I don't have to do step one. They already gave me the slope. But I will still do steps two and three. I'll plug stuff in, solve for b, write my equation. Okay, example, mx plus b. This one says y, m, x, b. Get used to working with fractions. I know that this is 2, I know my x that went with it was 8, and now I have a negative 3 quarters. Negative 3 quarters times 8. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Add 6 to the other side, I got b is 8. So now I have a y-intercept, I have a slope, go write your equation. Ta-da! So because this is so critical, this isn't a thumbs page like do it if you have to. This is going to be do it for real. All five of those. Go get them. And again, I really hope that you're actually pausing and doing this. So, here, I'm not going to stop writing that y equals mx plus b over and over. I think you know that that's what I'm replacing. I have thing is thing times thing plus b and solve. I have thing is thing times thing plus b and solve. Here I'm going to have to, off to the side, slope is. Slope is. Didn't leave enough room on my own paper. Slope is. Okay, and in we go. Number five. I know my y. I know the x that goes with it. I know my m, my slope. So negative 3 is negative 5 plus b. Add 5 to the other side. b is 2. I know my y-intercept. I know my slope. I write y is 5x plus 2. Next up, I know my y, negative 5, I know my x, 4. I know my slope that goes with it, negative 1 half of 4 is negative 2. I'll add 2 to the other side, getting negative 3 is b. I know my slope, I know my y-intercept, I put them in the right spots m x plus b. Remember it's plus a negative 3 so I'll just write minus 3. Down here first I gotta find my slopes. 11 minus negative 1 and 2 minus negative 2. This is why those parentheses are really handy. If we didn't put parentheses there how many of us said 2 minus 2 is 0, and then this was undefined, and what the crap do I do now? No, it's 2 minus a negative 2. So I have to remember I add the opposite, add the opposite, getting 12 over 4, which is 3. So I know the slope. I've got a pair of points to choose from. I can use either one, doesn't matter. Most kids are probably going to choose 211 because it's a positive number. It's easier to work with. So I'll plug in my y, 
my m, my x, that goes with the y, plus b. Getting 11 is 6 plus b, subtract, b is 5. I know m, I know b, go write my equation. 3x plus 5. Do it all over again. Blue, blue, pink, pink. Yeah, we'll do pink. Y sub 2 minus y sub 1. X sub 2 minus x sub 1. I add the opposite when subtracting a negative. That's really 3. 4 minus 10 is a negative 6, and I'll reduce that down calling it a negative one-half. Remember, divide by three, divide by three. So, I know my slope. I know an xy pair. I'm going to choose 4, 2 because it's smaller numbers and both positive. y goes here, m goes here, x goes there. Oh, that's a 4. Negative one half times four is negative two. Add two to the other side, I get b is four. I know my slope, I know my y-intercept, I get to write y is negative one half x plus four. Oh, I dawned on my little thing there. Oh, but the little frame here. I you probably should know when I put my desk up here. You probably notice I'm, you know, a little bit of a dork. I play uh, magic over webcam with people all around the world. So, um, yeah, that, that's what this is. I'm a dork, just in case you didn't know that. And uh, the last one here, I'm going to put my y sub 2, y sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 1. Add the opposite, add the opposite, getting 9 over 21, reduce it down, divide both by 3, getting 3 sevenths. Ooh, this one's going to be a little icky, maybe. It's going to have some fractions. I plug in. Um, I'm going to choose 7, 7. 7 my y, 7 my x. 3 sevenths. Okay, you know, some of us will be kind of panicking. Oh no, fractions and ugly numbers, but 3 sevenths times 7 is just 3, turns out. So, just because it looked like it might have been gross doesn't mean that it was. Subtract 3 and get b is 4. So, I write finally. I know my slope, I know my y intercept y is 3 sevenths x plus 4. Okay, sorry this is all pretty messy here. I had to do this in a hurry, like I was scrambling to write my notes during lunch. But that's the heart of it. Like You need to know how to uh, write the equations for those. In fact, we might end up practicing this again on uh, Monday. So, on to problem five, graphing it. Okay, so some of you who were in the pilot group um, using a different book, different curriculum, different pacing uh, with Mr. Scoglin first semester, you kind of turboed through this. So when we were graphing by table, some of you decided, well, I don't need to do a table. I don't need to know how to do a table. I know this trick that we're about to do now. That only works for slope intercept that only works for things in this form that only works for linear equations in this form if it isn't in that form then you can't do that you still have to do by table so that's why we had to practice it but graphing these is actually super easy no stop it I said he hears me he's got Vulcan hearing 
if I want to graph something that is y equals 2x minus 1, I have a y-intercept of negative 1, so I go put a dot at negative 1. 2, written as a fraction, I put it as 2 over 1. That is a slope of up, because it's positive 2, and to the right. So I just take this dot, and from there I'm going to make my own steps. I'm going to go up to right 1. Up to right 1. I'm just going to do that as many times as I can fit on the graph. Now if I ran out of room, I can reverse that and go down to left 1. Down to left 1. You put it all together, grab a straight edge, put your little arrows on there. Make sure you actually run your line all the way across the graph. Don't just do a little nubbin in the middle of it. And there you go. That's it. Start at your y-intercept. Use your slope to make a few more points. Connect the dots. Two points, geometrically speaking, makes a line. But I would ask you to make a minimum of three. Because then, what happens if I have a point here, a point here, and a point here? What if I miscounted? When I try to put my straight edge on there, see how it doesn't quite hit all of them at the same time? That's how I know I goofed up. So three points is what we would like. Two is an absolute bare minimum, but you leave yourself open to risk. So, in both of these, Start at your y-intercept, use your slope to count. Go. We should be starting at 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Slope is negative 3 over 1, so that's down and to the right. So from here, down 1, 2, 3, right 1. Down, one, two, three, right one. Down, one, two, three, right one. I had to go a little off-road. But now I got a really good line. Just like that. The next one, notice that you didn't really have enough room. So sometimes you have to make it go by a scale. So I'm going to come over here and say this is times two on my y-axis. I don't have to do times 2 on both my x and y axes. I can only do it on 1 if I want. And a nice way to make myself remember this is to go put tick marks halfway through the box so I remember as I'm counting each box is technically worth 2. Okay. So now I'll start at 8, up 2, 4, 6, 8. Up 4, right 1. Well, what happens when I can't go up 4 and right 1? I reverse that and go the other direction. Down 1, 2, 3, 4, right 1. Remember, my x-axis is still by 1s. Down 1, 2, 3, 4, right, 1. Down, 1, 2, 3, 4, right, 1. Or sorry, left, 1. My, my camera here is inverted, so when I say to the right, I'm pointing to my left. Yeah. Just like I would in class, which sometimes makes me say things fast backwards. So, the very last thing and hopefully that's easy. We're going to get a little more practice here. The very last thing is if I can graph these, then I can start extrapolating. I can put a real-world context on paper. And the further you go in science, math, economics, personal finance, anything, being able to read a graph is paramount. So, um, you have a diver, further down they go, 
the water pressure, how much it's, if you've ever gone uh, in the pool and tried to dive down to the bottom at the you know, 10, 12 foot area, if you've ever actually been out in the ocean and tried scuba diving, you can feel it just crushing in on you. So they're saying that pressure increases the more you go down. Use the information in the diagram to write an equation. Well, this is where we've seen it before, but I want you to write it again. These mx plus b slope-intercept versions of graphs, the slope is a rate. So I'm going to write rate x plus, and b is the y-intercept. It's where it starts on the y-axis, so I'm going to say rate x plus start. So this problem says uh, at zero meters the pressure is one. So I'm starting with one. One ATM, if you know that, so that's atmospheres. It's one normal atmosphere of pressure at sea level. Um, and the pressure increases by 0.1 atmospheres per minute as they dive, or minute, meter, as they dive. So, be careful about that. See, maybe we better define our x's and y's here again. The problem says the pressure y at a depth of x meters. So if this is y and this is x, remember that our slope is always change in y's over change in x's. That means my slope is atmospheres per meter. Oh, well they just, they wrote atmospheres per meter. It increases by an atmosphere per meter. So, point zero one, oh no, zero point one x. That's my rate. They just tell me my rate and my starting amount, so they're giving me my slope and my line or set, just like we did a couple examples ago. If I'm going to graph that, I need to make an appropriate scale. So, how far do you think you're going to be diving down? Oh, I tried doing the snorkel thing once, and it was a disaster. Um, 10 meters, see I've got 10 boxes. 10 meters is roughly 30 yards. That's a long way to dive down. Like, I think we can safely just do that. So I'm going to say this is meters of dive. And I'm just going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, if my rate is that I'm going, my pressure is increasing 0.1 for every meter, 0.1 for every meter, then it would probably make sense for this to also just go by 0.1, go by tenths. So I'm going to have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Make sure that you also say this is um, pressure. Uh-oh. Where does it start, though? Yeah, I'm going up by... 0.1 every time, but I'm supposed to start at 1.0. Uh-oh. So maybe I can use my little lightning graph, you remember those, to say this is actually starting at 1.0. Remember that little break? And this will be 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5.
and then this will be 2.0. Now I can fit my whole graph starting at 1 with a rise of 0.1, a run of 0.1, or 1. Rise of 0.1, run of 1. Rise of 0.1, run of 1. Do, 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 do. And get my graph. Okay, so writing the equation probably isn't actually going to be that tough. They're just going to tell me the rate and the start. It's going to be getting that correct scale on there again. So they ask us plumbers charging to $65 fee plus $35 per hour. Turn that into an equation and get your graph on. Again, hopefully you actually did that. So, pretty straightforward. Fee, you're going to pay that no matter what. Rate. So, I'm going to have to start at 65, and then every hour we're going up $35. Uh, dollars. So, my X scale, remember, 35 times X, X is hours. It makes sense that I choose just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because I tell you what, if you got a plumber there for 10 hours, you're, in, you're probably in a world of hurt anyway. Um, so this is going to be hours. This is going to be my total fee or cost? Total cost. And we'll make sure to put in dollars there so that we know that this is cost in dollars, not rupees, not rubles, not yen, not euros. Okay, and if I'm starting at $65, and then it's going to go up 35, up 35, up 35, up 35, I probably shouldn't have this like only 0 to 100. It's probably not enough to see. So maybe I go, you know what, if my rate is 35, and I hope some of you have already done this, why not just go by 35s? See, if I say this is 0, 35, 70, 105, 140, 175, 210, and then 280, and then 350. See, if I go by 35, then when I ballpark starting at 65, and then go up 35 for every one hour, then I can go up one box over an hour, up a box, over an hour. A box over an hour. A box. One, 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 one. And make a graph scale match what I need it to do. So, word problems, I know, but we're going to be doing a lot of them this semester. The very last thing is, again, more practice with that. So, you have these three to graph. Notice one of them isn't in slope-intercept form. You need to change it. At the very least, I want you to pause it and do those three, and then I'll walk through another uh, word problem. Okay. Round one. There, let me just move it over. There's no number in front of x. So I know there's a little invisible 1. And if there's a 1, I write it as a fraction as 1 over 1, which is up 1, right 1. So I'll start at 1, 2, 3, 4. And if I can't go up 1 and right 1, because I ran out of room, I can always 
reverse it and say down one, left one. And connect my dots. Next up, I know I start at a y-intercept of negative 1, a slope of negative 2, put an over 1 to make it a fraction, tells me I'll go down to right 1. It's always to the right, left to right, like a book, unless you need to reverse it. So down to right 1, down to right 1. I can also reverse it up to left 1, up to left 1, up to left 1, up to left 1. Okay, no matter what. I suppose I should actually use a straight edge on these, huh? Okay, no matter what, you're going to have the same ratio. Either you're going down the stairs or up the stairs. The last one, just real simple, I had to subtract x from both sides. These are not like terms, so I just leave them. So we got a y-intercept to negative 3, and a slope of down 1, right 1, or reverse it, up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1. There you go. Word problem. If you want to test yourself, which you should, pause it and try. Hopefully you did. We're going to have a $10 rental. So just to get the rental card. By the way, this problem is old as the children say, AF. Um, I haven't seen a Mr. Movie's rental card for 20 years. Anyway, it's 10 bucks to get your membership card or whatever it is. So you gotta pay that no matter what. Your rental is $2 per movie. So I'm not going to have an X, I'm going to have an M replacing it. And that's going to give me my total cost. Okay. So instead of Y and X, it's going to be M and C, or C and M, respectively. If I graph that, luckily you already have a scale there. So you can start at 10 and go up 2 for every 1 movie. Up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Connect the dots. And this, that's the part that matters. See, once I have these models, I can predict at 6 movies it's going to cost me $22. Now I can also say the cost is 2 by 6 plus 10 is 12 plus 10 is 22. What I want you to make sure when you answer that question is don't just say 22. $22. Make sure you label what it is. So, um, thanks for hanging in there with me. I do not like doing video lessons. I know that you don't like doing them either. But sometimes it's what we got to do. So, assignments on plan book. Get them.